Greetings, astronauts, and welcome back to Astro Candy. Hello, I'm Raven, your host, and we are looking to the stars to find out what to expect during Gemini season in stargazing. This is an Astro Candy mini sewed subseries that highlights the most significant transits of each astrological season. And since it's Gemini season, we're talking about what's coming up for the next month. I want to say first that I'm sorry this episode is late. I have not been feeling well the last week. I kind of felt like I was coming down with something, but tried to catch it with Zykim and emergency. And I think the result was that now whatever was manifesting is just stuck in my throat. You know, I've had a sore throat for like a week. I saw a doctor. They literally just gave me pain meds. They're like, yeah, we don't think it's strep or anything. We just think it's like a gnarly virus. So here's for managing the pain. And man, is it painful when you talk for a living (laughs) and the last thing you want to do is talk. It's a little bit detrimental (laughs) to your career. But I digress. Let's talk about Gemini season. I'm going to move through this quickly. I mean, it's a mini sode after all, but I do want to keep it short and sweet for the sake of my vocal cords. And by the way, if you love this episode or any other Asher Kinney episode, I would love it if you would rate five stars on Apple podcast or Spotify. I did see the new ones, by the way. Oh my God. It makes me so excited when I just see like one or two extra ratings. It really helps uh, the visibility of this podcast and I really appreciate it. So yeah, if you could do that or just send it to a friend, I would be forever grateful. So from May 20th to June 20th, the sun is moving through Gemini. Let's talk about Gemini, ruled by Mercury, the planet of communication. So you're going to find yourself wanting to connect with more people or maybe even work on your communication skills. You know, the essence of this Gemini season is vibrant. It's clever. It's When we're at our freest, you might find that uh, a lot of people are more open, less judgy, more playful, positive, fun. Gemini season really brings us the opportunity to express ourselves and discuss things that really matter to us and also get out, travel, explore the world. Gemini is really the social butterfly of the Zodiac. So expect to be booked and busy with group hangouts, backyard barbecues, long weekend trips. I mean, this weekend I'm getting together with a group of friends. We're doing like this outdoor movie picnic situation. And I also have like a a Capri themed party coming up. Like this is the most social I've ever been. It's usually in Gemini season that I'm always out and about and doing things. And that says a lot for me. I'm very introverted. Now the caveat here to Gemini's being everywhere all the time is that they're not really known for balance like their air sign counterpart Libra. So just make sure that when you are doing a million things at a million miles a minute, you do leave time to decompress after a long week uh, and just recalibrate after all of those social interactions just to kind of cleanse your aura of other people's energy. Now, Gemini is represented by the twins, and that's because of their dual nature. Gemini season is a great time to change your opinions, maybe see situations, friendships, partnerships from a different POV. I think this is a really good time to come to some sort of mutual understanding. You can understand and accept somebody else's viewpoints, even if you oppose them. So you don't have to be rigid. It doesn't have to be black and white thinking. Uh, Gemini really welcomes in new insights and ideology. And the acceptance level is really high. Like I said, people aren't as judgy during Gemini season, and it can really bring a lot of people together. So if you want to learn more about Gemini, listen to the sign series Gemini featuring radio host and comedian Shelby Sauce. I will link that in the show notes. And let's move on to what more you can expect this Gemini season. We've actually got a stellium, which is three or more planets moving through Gemini this month. So This is going to be really exciting. The first major event this month is today. We have a full moon in Sagittarius on May 23rd. So you'll notice Sagittarian themes like spirituality, writing, teaching, higher education, foreign travel. That may be your focus at the end of this month. So maybe you want to learn more about the world or you want to travel to other countries or your beliefs are shifting. For me, 
I have been going inward a lot the last several days, just looking at my subconscious limiting beliefs. And I've been journaling a bunch and also using EFT tapping to work through those limiting beliefs. And since the ruling planet of Sagittarius is Jupiter and it's conjunct Venus at the time of the full moon, this is going to bring up feelings of optimism and a abundance. So the next few days, you'll really start to feel this. Um, You might feel hopeful about upcoming opportunities, maybe connections you've made, new endeavors you've started, or just a general sense of optimism. Now that the sun's out longer and the days are warmer and I don't know, maybe summer Fridays are coming back, just things like that. It's a really hopeful time of year. On May 23rd, Venus moves into Gemini. Then on May 25th, Jupiter moves into Gemini, and that's where it will stay until June 9th. This is a really significant transit that's going to define your next year. So listen up. Having both Venus, the planet of love and beauty, and Jupiter, the planet of luck, moving through Gemini this month specifically means a lot of positive opportunities and growth in the Gemini ruled house of your chart. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go to astro-charts.com to get your free birth chart. And then when you look at the wheel, you'll see on the outside, it'll say like Aries, Gemini, Libra, like you'll see all of them labeled. Find out where Gemini falls for you and what house that's in. So for example, I'm an Aries rising. So my Gemini rules my third house, the house of communications. That's the mind, it's thinking, it's social activities, it's interests, it's neighbors, it's siblings, it's pretty much everything Gemini. So what's interesting is I'm actually interviewing to be on a game show right now. Um, My social calendar is robust. I just told you about that. And since I found a new place to live, I'm actually going to be getting two new neighbors who happen to be my friends. So look for the Gemini ruled house in your chart, and then you can kind of see, kind of project what to expect this Gemini season and what kind of growth and opportunities and abundance are going to come your way. Then Mercury, the planet of communication, moves into Gemini on June 3rd. And then on June 6th, we've got a new moon in Gemini. See, I said so much Gemini, Gemini stellium over here. So this new moon is going to mark a new chapter in the Gemini ruled house of your chart. I already told you about mine and I told you how to find yours. So it's going to empathize those Gemini themes of communication and connecting with people and travel. And since this new moon is conjunct Venus, it's also going to highlight relationships. So the first week of June is actually probably going to be a very social time for you and some things in your dating life or maybe you're in a partnership, your relationship could be exalted, meaning something big could happen. On June 8th, Mars, which is the planet of action, is going to move into Taurus and that's where it will stay through the end of July. So with this transit, We talked about it in stargazing, Taurus season, but Taurus is very much slow and steady wins the race. It's very different than when Mars was in Aries, for example, which was all about, you know, making fast decisions, being assertive and just acting in a blink. But Mars and Taurus is going to have you slowing down more time for rumination, and more time for just seeing how things play out and how they develop. And you may also find yourself leaning into more Taurus themes like self-care, cooking, getting outside, grounding, um, focusing on work, but in a way that's like the future and making sure it's like long lasting and maybe even doing things like crafts. Now in the days surrounding June 14th, Mercury, Venus and the sun are all going to come together right around the same few degrees in Gemini. So again, this will emphasize the themes of human connection and you may find yourself having pleasant interactions and conversations with people. So mid-June, really good time to date or just go to any type of social event that's going to bring you and the people that you love together. Maybe you can meet other people. I just feel like this has been so prominent in my life. My friend group loves having uh, social gatherings, especially themed ones. And now that it's the summer, I mean, we think it's the summer, it's really the stars. But now that it's the summer and the stars are aligning in the constellation of Gemini, (laughs) everybody's ready to have more themed parties, more summer pool days, um, and just a lot more fun. Finally, we close out Gemini season with both Venus and Mercury 
moving into cancer, and that's going to be on June 17th. So the majority of Gemini season is going to be really social, really active. And honestly, by the time that we get to June 17th, you might find yourself sick of people (laughs) or just sick of being out and about and out of the house. And you kind of want to stick a little bit closer to home and socialize with those closest to you and those you deeply care for because cancer is really about those close connections with people, which we'll talk about in stargazing cancer season. Oh, all right. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Astro Candy in this mini sub sub series of stargazing. I'll be releasing one more episode until the summer hiatus. So next week, May 30th, is the last Astro Candy episode of the summer. We are going to be dark for the summer, save for stargazing. You'll still get that every astrological season along with the newsletter. So the newsletter is also on that hiatus, except for when it correlates with stargazing. Oh man, my voice is so fatigued. So I'm going to go again. I appreciate you for listening. I would love it if you would rate five stars on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or send this to a friend. All right. Bye.